Jiraiya has been one of the most loved and memorable characters in the entire Naruto series. Not only known for being one of the legendary Sanin, our favorite pervy sage has been a mentor to not only just Naruto, his father and fourth Okage, Minato Namikaze, and pseudo leader of Akatsuki, Nagato. Speaking of Nagato, who you may remember to be known as Pain, Nagato had an interesting relationship with Jiraiya leading up to their seemingly fated encounter in the land hidden in the rain, which during these events would unfortunately be the last time we would see our boy Jiraiya alive and kicking at the hands of his own former pupil, Nagato. Jiraiya's death most certainly impacted and affected lots of fans around the world. Oddly enough, his reanimated appearance wasn't included in the fourth ninja world war. Why was that? Why wasn't Jiraiya brought back to life back then if he was truly deceased? Kabuto claims his body had sunken too low to be recaptured and utilized, but I am here today to tell you why I believe Jiraiya lives on. So this belief and theory starts here. In chapter 520 of the Naruto manga, anime episode 264, Tobi distrusted Kabuto and wanted to see the Ido Tensei before his very eyes. And for those that don't remember the Ido Tensei, that's the reanimation jutsu where we saw all of the formerly deceased ninja brought back so that they could fight alongside each other against their comrades of the past and whatnot. During Kabuto's explanation, he confirms that I could not locate Uchiha Shishui's body anywhere, and Jiraiya's was too deep under sea at a water pressure intolerable to human intrusion. So let's just keep that in mind as we go along with this. The Aridge Tridge Reunite Fast forward a bit during the 4th Great Ninja War, Sasuke finally makes his decision to help aid the side against Madara and Obito, in doing so reuniting the original Team 7. During their flashy pose, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura each summon their respective contracted animals. This is where we notice our second biggest clue. While Sakura and Sasuke both summon their usual snail and snake, Naruto actually summons Gamakichi, who's Gamabunta's son, instead of Gamabunta himself. In chapter 634 of the manga, episode 374 of the anime, being that Gamabunta is normally the toad Naruto summons, Gamakichi informs us that Pa's all tied up with some negotiations, so I came. Furthermore, I'd like to add that an unofficial translations have Gamakichi responding to Naruto with, Dad is busy, I came in his place. Rather than what is said in both the official translations in both the manga and anime. With this in mind, either way you look at this, simply put, Gamabunta was tied up doing something that held up his appearance during a time of war where he was needed. If you ask me, what else could he be busy with? If we're going with the negotiations excuse, maybe Gamabunta was negotiating with the other Toad Elders to go and explore those deep waters to recover Jiraiya's body. After all, Jiraiya is one of the three shinobi in history that Gamabunta respected enough to allow him to be ordered at will. As time goes on, the story of Naruto as we know it comes to a happy conclusion. The ninjas overcome the villainous threats of Obito, Madara, and Kaguya, Naruto saves Sasuke, and later then fulfills a lifelong goal in becoming the Hokage of the Leaf Village. With Naruto's story being told, his son's begins. Orto introduces a whole new look and motive around his story. What path will he take in comparison to his father? What is the significance of the mark he is bestowed upon? Who exactly is Kawaki? And what are the true intentions and goals of Kata? Now, Kata is an organization that seemed to take some visible inspiration from the former Akatsuki clan from Naruto, but have missions and accomplishments that they wish to achieve that are, at this moment, pretty unclear. One thing that is certain is their affinity to Kawaki, who shares a similar mark to Boruto. The group refers to Kawaki as the vessel. Funny enough, Kata literally means shell or husk. From events in the manga, we can now assume that the inners of the group have access to other vessels or shells of their own. We see this in chapter 34 of the Boruto manga after Naruto defeats Delta. After receiving a ginormous Rasengan from the 7th Hokage, her body self-destructs allowing her drone nearby to retreat back to their base. At the base of Kata, we see the drone connect to a terminal that activated a spare body that seemingly maintained Delta's conscious memories and experience. Before Delta was dealt with, <laughs> 
she did not come alone on this mission. She was accompanied by Kashin Koji, a character who has definitely raised a lot of eyebrows from fans following the story. From his appearance alone, Koji is a tall individual who has long white hair and a mask that covers the top half of his face. Red marks can also be seen that end at some point beneath his mask. So, if we were to put both Jiraiya and Koji side by side, we can see some similarities with their features. They might not be spot on, but this is only just scratching the surface. Towards the end of chapter 28, Kashin Koji and Delta are both seen right outside looking in on Konoha. Before infiltrating the village continuing their mission to retrieve Kawaki, Koji briefly explains the security of the village. There once was a special unit that monitored all who entered or left Konoha via their chakra. He goes on to say, if anything foreign enters the mix, it's detected instantly. Delta quickly assumes that they won't be able to infiltrate them easily, but to our shock, Koji swiftly jumps over the wall and enters Konoha with ease. With understanding how the security system works, how can someone that is apparently foreign to the village enter with no issues? Kashin Koji didn't utilize any secret or hidden techniques, nothing fancy at all. He simply jumped into the village like it was just any old fence in the way. Speaking of techniques, in a fight between Ao and Team Konohamaru, Kashin Koji appears to debut some jutsu up his sleeve. And it is jutsu we are all very familiar with. In chapter 22 of the Boruto manga, Koji first performs the Kuchiyose summoning technique to summon a steam toad. Hmm. After introducing himself to Team Konohamaru, chapter 23 continues with a back and forth between Konohamaru himself and Kashin Koji. In the midst of battle, Konohamaru tries to attack Koji with a Rasengan, but to his surprise however, Koji responded with a Rasengan of his own. Orto surprisingly states, I thought Dad and Master were the only ones with Rasengan. Master of course meaning Konohamaru to Boruto. Funny enough, Boruto's knowledge of the Rasengan only goes back to his own father using it. Little does he know, there were others before his father and Konohamaru sensei that were users of the technique as well. Kakashi Hatake, the founder and creator of the technique, Minato Namikaze, and the master to the aforementioned fourth Hokage, Jiraiya. With all the evidence that dates back to events in the Naruto story all the way up to the ongoing story of Boruto, my answer to the question, is Jiraiya alive, is simply this. In anime, or in most other popular series, you can never count a character truly dead if there is no visible body. Yes, I know, witnessing Jiraiya's body fall into the depths of the waters in the Hidden Rain Village is damn well painful to experience, let alone rewatch. But at the end of the day, I just feel like how he quote unquote died wasn't good enough. Especially with how other actions after his apparent death took place. Why were there no follow-ups from Fukusaku and Shima? How was Gamabunta unavailable during the fourth ninja war with no real explanation even during the post-war? And how is there a person in Kata that has slight resemblance to his appearance while also utilizing similar jutsu that has full access to the leaf village. I think the fact that Kashin Koji's design is to really get us questioning the character overall, which is basically all the evidence you need. His mask covers just above his nose to part of his forehead to hide his full face. He acts as if he has an ulterior motive to take down Jigen through Borto and Kawaki, and obviously all the evidence I previously mentioned prior to this. Kata's whole gimmick is having access to multiple bodies or vessels. We constantly hear them use this term. We've even seen how easy it is for them to obtain a new body or vessel through Delta. Could Kashin Koji be the one who has been using Jiraiya's body as his own vessel? Or is this Jiraiya acting truly out of character for reasons unknown to us at this moment in time? I honestly believe there is still something missing in this whole scenario. From the battle against the Six Pains, to the Fourth Great Ninja War, all the way to the current point in the manga of Boruto, a lot of time has passed. We don't know when exactly Kata formed and when Kashin Koji joined, and for what reason did he join. And we also haven't seen Koji's backstory, which I'm hoping we do get around to in Boruto. If you count bodies being used in real time, right now, I'm going to have to say that Jiraiya is alive, through Kashin Koji.
if you made it this far, I have to say thank you for watching this long-awaited video. <laughs> I know this theory of mine has been in the works for quite some time now, and I know a lot of my longtime supporters, fans, and followers have been eagerly waiting on this video. I hope I covered everything that there is to cover, and like I said before, I really do feel like there is something missing to this theory. But yet, at the same time, I felt like I didn't want to have this video take longer than it already has been to produce for you guys. To the point where I even had to outsource this to my boy MJ to make sure the quality aspect of this presentation met all your expectations. So thank you, MJ. I didn't want to half-ass this video, nor did I want to get it done in a rushed fashion. In a way, I'm kind of happy that I did wait a bit to see the events of the manga play out in Boruto. Having a hunch off of a design obviously wasn't enough to get people behind my theory, but obviously, as y'all saw, this man Kashin Koji is really giving us reason to question a lot of things. Especially in regards to our homie Jiraiya. Will there be a part 2? Most likely. But as always, we'll have to stay tuned for what Kishimoto has in store for us. Again, I can't thank y'all enough for supporting me and this channel. I do want to point out that this video wasn't done for free, <laughs> but it's something I wouldn't mind doing. This was my first time doing an essay styled video with some really good post production alongside it. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos here on Uchi Games, please, please, please consider donating, becoming a member, or becoming a patron on Patreon. As some of y'all know, with the limited time I have as is, with everything else I've got going on, Supporting me directly can and will go a long way. If there are any other theories you'd like me to break down in this kind of fashion, I would use all support to go directly into reproducing and delivering this level of content. Again, thank you all, and thank you, Jiraiya. I'm sure this isn't the last time we'll see you. That's not a Borto filler arc. <clears throat> Like, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, all that good stuff. You know all the supporting links will be in the description below. Take care of yourselves, guys. Have a good one. May the power protect you. Keep it locked, loaded right here and classy on the Uchi Games channel. And I'll see you guys next time. And also, how can I forget, big shout out to my boy Barack Obama, aka Saving the Bees. He is also a very big Jiraiya fan as well. And I actually got the honor and pleasure of meeting him in person at Command Con this past year. And uh, that's actually where I learned that he was a big Jiraiya fan. So um, I told him personally, like, yo, I'm going to do this video um, and I hope you check it out. So, yep, shout outs to Barack Obama.